Hello. Again, it's been half a year since the last recording. So, yet another time for 25 minutes of real programming. So, where was I like half a year ago? Yeah. I was talking about the hash functions. And, uh, well, let's get on with it because. Otherwise, I will spend another half year doing nothing related to this. So, I'll just copy paste this hash function out of the internet. Let's see how it works. There it is. So, it's saying that well, there is some problems with the code being Python, Python 2 and I'm coding with Python 3, so let's do some checks to make it work. All right, get hash of tears. There. TMP and one. Okay, then there's a Unicode problem. This is has been quite common for me. This Unicode problems with Python 3 and Python 2 you well if you know Python 2 you know that the strings there don't actually have an encoding, so they are just byte streams. So yeah. I'll have to modify this more. So get this work. So let's just copy it again. And let's see if I can use it here. Okay, there's the function, and I'm going to there's some trace back function. I'll just remove this all together. Uh, so now there's some checks. I'm not going to do those. Do the tabs correctly. Like so, by the way, I have to check the licensing. I think this is good free for everyone to use because it's with the Stack Overflow directly. Thank you, Andy. For making this little code. Okay, so what else do I need? There's this verbo stuff. Let's remove that altogether. I don't need that. Not at all interested in that. Uh, uh, file, try. Open, you can't open the file for some reason, then you continue otherwise until until end. So true read if no buffer then break. I would maybe do this a little bit differently, but that is okay, then it will go to the Sha has update has lib in the five buffer. The buffer has now an encoding. So what does this say? Unicode objects must be encoded before hashing. Okay. So let's just write out this import hash lib. Hash lib in the five. Let's make a Unicode object. That A must be encoded before X has coded with the F8. Okay, that's that's how I'm going to do that. 
so encode UTF eight should do the trick. Could be that this is not going to work on everybody's file systems, but on mine it should. This code here also the buff code UTF eight. Right. That. And generate Azure Dyers TMP here. Hop object has no attribute any code. All right, Rome, that didn't work. Help of passion and the bot option in JS with a string returning in the hash object option in the else string bytes has no attribute. So if I do a string of this, that works better. Okay, iteration one point two. Oh, Unicode object must be encoded before hashing. Ah, oh, but yeah. So the buffer is okay, I think. It is okay, but this hex digest and code UTF eight. I have to really check what this does to see how it works. Okay, that it actually worked. Yeah. So that went through the whole TMP file system. Let's just so there's the puppet result folder underneath. So the puppet result. Yeah. And there's another hash. Uh, this should be different. Yeah. Okay, seems that this now works. So what did I do? I had had to encode that the UTF-8 to get get the X digest work in there. All right. OS, I need SHA hash and hash all of that. Here, OS I already have, so I don't need to re import that. Mm. Uh, yeah, this deers is not used, so I'll use underscore instead. Going to use that. So we open file that read binary as F1 do this thing. I'm not going to have all the coolness that this guy has. And it could be a girl also, but well, this person has made instead. I'm going to use my option. Let's like that. So, 
that should be the hash of the directory. File path open. That actually doesn't consider the file name at all. Have to check that. So, so that gives me seven A and what else? Now let's go to the TMP file, move some test suite five robot to test suite modified five robot. So that didn't change the content. So let's see if the okay. The hash changed. So it actually worked. Great. Okay, so then A, yeah, that's the same. Okay, this works. All right. So now, one thing, well, Last time, like six months ago, one thing that I mentioned was, was that I need to verify quite often that if I'm failing. So, so we can, in this case, take the data sources here. So, sources. see if we are still on the right track. So map it, map it, TNP. So now the TNP is the data sources and I, I need to actually like go through those data sources here for source and data sources. Then I can go hash of dips. That should still work. So here's my hash code. And let's time this now. Time time is the start. And then I'm interested in how long this whole thing lasts. So the other one there. Okay, that's something like um, one. 0 0.009 seconds. And I believe this is the one that takes most of the time. Yeah. So that's actually quite expensive operation to do that hashing. Consider what what to do with that. But it's still, if I believe correctly, this should still be pretty much more efficient than just doing the lines. Names there. Yeah, it's still like two 
almost 50 times faster to do that at least on my machine at the current current ish yeah 0 0.35 to do that and to do this all calculating the hashes that's you know at least 30 times faster to do that well yeah we could modify this more and try to get it work more efficiently but for now it's good enough so this here takes the hashes of all the data sources so I need to actually make this work so that it, it takes all the data sources in and then directories Each and every one like that. And now I'm getting the hash of all the deers here. I'm just going to modify the naming a bit so that it looks so get hash of deers like that. works so hash of beers it's there okay so now now we're cal calculating the hash of the directories here and then I need to basically see if I'm storing that store sheet names then I'm going to also store the hash of deers and as the first line of the sheet names file I'm going to write the as of deers plus a new line and then from that, that on I'm going to write all the um, all the sweet names so now as the first line there's this has of the deers and I can also assume that the hash of has is here also the same and some sweets lines and zero is that and then this is now the sweets actually are from the second line onwards now so so now if the has of sweets is the same as previously everything's okay but if has of sweets let's strip that new line out it's different than has of deers then we have a collision or or this something something in this line is has changed should regenerate we should regenerate in this case so let's let's see if I can get this work so first step because now the Babot suite names is like this which is wrong syntax currently and it's it didn't take the 
this first sweep at all here. Instead, it, it actually thought that this, this line here was the hash code line. So it said should regenerate. Let's remove that and now do another run. So that's about the same as normal run. And now next time it shouldn't regenerate. Yeah. So that that worked. And now now let's check all these three cases. So if I add a sweep. So let's, for example, take the, take the test suit number six and and copy it as test suit seven. Now the hash file should say should regenerate. And now if I remove that, it should say that don't regenerate. Yeah. And then if I rename one file, test suit one, or move or remove one, test suit six again, this is say it should regenerate. Yeah. And what was the, if I change something in the suits? First, make the suit number six work again. Now, if I, yeah, the hash is same. And now make some changes here. Like, so. And it again says that it should be generated. So, all of these checks now are identified with this one. So now, if this happens, you should regenerate. And I'll make another function for this one. Regenerate. But that's what it is. So now what, what this does actually is everything here and it needs that hash of deers needs that out steer and all this basically everything here is a bit past here and in this case it has to call itself again so if hash of shoots shoot names if hash of shoots is different then then we need to regenerate This means that I need to do what? Basically do this again. Yeah. Store sweet names, generate sweet names. I do that. Um, Better to do it like this. Just do this here. Then again. I could use this directly. This returns the sweet names. Yeah. Do that. Line 
lines. Sweets. Like that. And now we can return the sweets from there. So this should now actually regenerate whenever anything of those works. So let's let's see what happens. Okay. So now it executed cases from zero to six. Now let's reroll that test suite number six. We should have all here, everything is here. One, two, three. Okay, number four is missing because I removed that, but everything else is here. And now, now I remove the test suite number six, so it should work again. Yeah, and nothing bad happened, and it didn't try to execute the test suite number six. So this, this actually now works. And it should also have regenerated the sweeteners. Yeah. So that's the first part of this. I'm just going to remove all the fanciness from here. This is now done. Directory has. And yeah. Let's see when I have time for the next episode. But I'll put this now into the version control. So hash lib, version arc lib, white space there. Oops. Test sweeteners, return to Babel. Yeah, but I didn't use this at all, so. That all together. Just check out that everything works still. Yeah. Let's go on. Yeah. Now this all should just work. So directory hash. Oh yeah, I don't have a network connection, but I will push this later on. So, see you next time.